the culture and to see him go back there and to do what he's done in a short fashion. Uh, number one is super impressive. Number two, it's not surprising. Chris is an excellent coach. He's very detailed. He's one of the, I would say, from a defensive perspective, took time years ago to teach me a lot about defense. Just I like to bring him in the offensive room to hear his perspective about what they were doing, how they were teaching it. And I know Chris is an excellent detailed coach, and that shows up in all facets of they play, but I'm particularly looking at their defense. And so they're very detailed, just like Chris. They're meticulous. Uh, they play the personality of the head coach, and it's a very impressive unit that uh, that, that plays on film weekly, and it, that, they, they do a really good job. Your comfort level at this point coming out of camp with the helmet communications and all the new technology that's being implemented? Well, Coach has done a great job of, of pressing us on that and making us, you know, using that daily for every scrimmage, every mock game. And so the comfort level is... Uh, you know, as good as it can be, I think, for going into game one. I think our quarterbacks really like it. I feel really comfortable with it. The only thing I haven't done is use it in a real game yet. Don't see any hiccups in that. Don't see any, you know, other than maybe a techn technological challenge. I don't know if that's even a word. But um, this is something going haywire with technology. But other than the way the functionality of the way it's built and set, I think it's a really good thing, and I think our guys are real comfortable with it. Between spring and summer, I'm sure you had a pretty good idea of what the offense could be. Was there anything in camp that stood out to you as maybe being new or surprising or, or different to something those guys did in the last three weeks? Speak that again. Ask, say, say that question or ask that question one more time. I'm sorry. Was there anything in the, in, during training camp that I don't know, surprised you or you saw maybe new or different from your guys that was a different than what you thought it would be going in? Well, I mean, I think you've seen the. I have noticed every individual player that we have that's returning uh, marked improvement. You know, and that would be to be expected. But I think our coaches, you know, uh, do a great job of the fine details and the, 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 you know, the technical aspect of their positions. And I've seen growth at all positions. I mean, I think just, um, you know, I think just the consistency from our, this group has, has stood out to me. I feel like we've been really consistent. And that's something that, uh, you know, we talk about being tough, smart, dependable, and that's something that we really talk to our guys about just holistically, but even on our side of the ball, like we have to be a dependable unit, and we have to show up every game. That doesn't mean we're going to score every time we get the ball, but we have to be consistent and dependable for our team, uh, and that's a big area of growth for us. I've seen those markings show up in practice, and now we need that to carry over for the season. Conversation did you have with Brett about these veteran maintenance days and just trying to balance the idea of continuity from practice to practice, but trying to get through a five-month season as well? Not many. Not many. Coach got great vision for what we're trying to do, and you know, it's one of the anybody that works underneath him or around him knows that uh, around him knows that he uh, he's got an incredible gift to think through A through Z, you know, and 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 really thorough and and what and what he sees and what he sees coming that. It's a unique perspective to only he has because he's the head coach. And so uh, that's one of those examples where he recognizes, you know, we got some older guys or some guys are a little tired to maintenance those guys, and we've got enough depth for the younger guys need to get work in that. So I think it's been a really good balancing act, and I think as we head into this game week, uh, I think we feel really good about our health overall. I see from Luke Allmeyer week one, there's some things you're looking forward to show you that he's, he's taken a step forward this year. Yeah, I think it'll show up in the play. I mean, like specifically, it'll be – uh, you know, uh, playing with poise and, you know, looking like a returning starter. And uh, that's my job to help facilitate that. It's our job around him, you know, to help facilitate that. Every player that's on the field, we just got to work in, in, you know, in unity and be on the same page from a protection standpoint, run game, run game checks, routes, routes depth, all the things that typically kind of show up in the first game. Um, you know, like that's inevitably they will. But our challenge is to be as game ready as we can be, and I feel like our unit has received that. And now we still got some work to do, a big work week ahead of us to put the finishing touches on that. But uh, I would expect Luke to come out and play in like uh, he has all fall camp, uh, which is very confidently uh, and with an urgency that's been really nice. In fact, your last stop was Zakari. It was this formation for you in the slot. I just can think back, like, what do you like about that look, and what, what can that do for an offense to that versatility? Well, um, yeah, I mean, I think all of our – I would say versatility is a key for that room in general. I mean, if you just – I think there's several guys. I think you'll see several guys uh, that are going to play, you know, at that position. And then I think there's a lot of guys that have a lot of flexibility from positions. It's, and so that's one of the things that's taught in the offense, just probably like most offenses are, is the flexibility of moving, hey, you may be here today and you may be here. That's one of the blessings and kind of, you know, when a guy does get nicked up is you get a chance to – 
to practice being in another position. Um, and so uh, it's my job, it's my job and our job as a staff to put our players in the best position they can be to be successful. You know, the, the, the best position to be successful, I should say. And sometimes that may be on the perimeter for a receiver. I mean, sometimes that may be in the, in the interior. Uh, it may be both in the same series, you know. And same thing for our tight ends and running backs. It's, you know, that's a fun part of being a coordinator is you get a chance to identify who your guys are and then move the pieces around a little bit. And so I think you would expect to see uh, multiple receivers and uh, multiple lineups. Well, last year you leaned on those three receivers for good reason. They were very good. But it sounds like you guys feel like you have more depth at that position. What does that do for you guys um, as play callers? What can that do for you Yeah, I think guys? depth everywhere is a good thing, right, in any position. And so we certainly – thats I think that would be probably one of the – I think, you know, I've kind of deflected both of your questions earlier about uh, what was different or what you saw different. I think just if you if, – as I peel back that question a little bit is uh, – you know, we went from in the spring to being kind of new face there and a lot of question marks. And there's still a lot of question marks there about game day, but I feel like that group as a whole has has blended together really nicely with the addition of, you know, Zakari and an older player. So now you have two older guys that, you know, between him and Pat, been around football for a long time, know how to play with a nice blend of youth and some returning guys. And I think it's made for a really nice blend of what we have there. And so... Um, I'm excited to see those guys, you know, take that to, the, to game action. The outside world sees an FCS game on your schedule, figures that's a piece of cake and that's going to be easy. Tell me why that's not the case. Why is, does coach not think that? Well, number one, you have to have blinders on to the outside world, period, right? Uh, no matter what week you're playing, no matter if it's going well, no matter if it's not going well, right? So that's a mentality right there. And, and number two, there's multiple. Number two, you get 12 opportunities in a year, okay? So you better be ready for every one of them. Number three, it's your opener, right? And number four, uh, and really, really, this is number one because you got a real quality opponent, you know? I mean, you got a team here right down the road that plays football the right way and has uh, got a lot of momentum going after their success that they had last year. And so, you know, that goes within the mantra of, you can substitute Eastern Illinois for whoever that might be, and that has to be the same mindset. But there's a lot of respect from us going into this game about who Eastern is and how they play, and our guys are ready for that challenge. But um, and so I think that you know that that hopefully that's a direct answer to how you you got to have blinders, and then you got to say, listen, everybody that we play is going to deserve our respect, um, and that's I would say and say the same thing if if we're playing. Um, you know, the Dallas Cowboys during the week. It's the same approach, right? You get 12 opportunities, and we know that they're going to be ready for us, and we're certainly doing our part to get ready for them. How is the tablet usage, like in your scrimmages and mock games, uh, just the taste of that? Just, what's that meant for you as a coach and maybe teaching in those moments when you've got maybe the immediacy? Yeah, I think that's going to be probably one of the most interesting or, you know, the most. The, to me, the headset communication is pretty cut and dry. You know, it's like, okay, I push a button and I talk talk to the quarterback and it cuts off at 15 seconds right and so that gives us a way to communicate right and then but the tablets there's probably going to be more subjective to team interpretation about how they're used how they're implemented again uh to to revisit earlier we've had multiple scrimmages and opportunities to learn how to use those and how how to navigate those for our football team how to take advantage of those in between series but uh and i think we feel good about that plan so it's going to be interesting to go through a game with it and to see. I know our players really gravitate toward it. They like that immediate feedback. I know us as coaches, it gives us some more defined feedback about what's happening and what we're seeing. Um, but at the end of the day, corrections are still need to be made, you know, verbally, uh, visually. And that's a nice supplement, I think, for us. And it's certainly a tool that we're going to try to use to our advantage. Do you see those games as an opportunity to, to get the running game clicking? Is that a point of emphasis going into the game for you? Well, our point of emphasis all offseason has been to be able to run the, to run the football better, right? And uh, we've talked multiple times about that. And um, that's, a, that's something that is, a, is in our DNA here, right? And, and we know that when we run the ball well, it makes things better for us offensively. It makes things better for us as a team. And so we want to get off to a great start against a really good defense. And it's going to take all phases for us to be able to do that. We're going to have to run the ball. We're going to have to throw the ball. We're going to have to have balance. We're going to have to protect the quarterback. We're going to have to make good decisions. But obviously, um, you know, this is the first game that we've had with the 2024 offensive, you know, football team. And so uh, I'm excited to be able to go out and, and put that on display 
for, for our football team. You know, that's the, the thing about in coaching, sometimes you can lose sight of, um, you know, the end of the day, coaching is about trying to get the best in the people around you and these young men and put them in the best chance they can, the best position they can be to be successful. And that's a, that's a great honor, you know, as the OC to be able to be a part of that. And so that, I don't take that lightly, and I'm looking forward to giving my guys the best chance they can be to be successful coming uh, this, this opener. This camp was to take that next step. So what's that look like to you with that? Yeah, I think just looking like a veteran, you know, and obviously not looking physically. We know what he, uh, there's a lot of other, de, de, you know, ex, you know, descriptive words that you could use when you say look like, because when he walks through the door, you know, he looks like, you know, probably like we'd all like to look like, honestly, you know, to some degree. And, uh, you know, but just to see him play like a veteran, you know, he, he got his feet wet last year and really was a nice, um, he really injected a lot of life into us to a large degree. And so, um, to take that experience, hit the ground running like I am a veteran, and I've seen signs of that, uh, and so I'm excited for him to be able to, to get back out there with us. Appreciate everybody. got lost. I went to every floor. I thought it was on four or five. It's been a while. Yeah, it has been a while. How you guys doing? Awesome. Where are you spending all off season adding, tweaking? What's the feeling of being able to go out there and kind of start anew? It's, it's good, man. I mean, I think, you know, like obviously anytime you, you, you go into your first year, first year as a play caller, there are some things you learn about yourself. There are some things some things you learn from a schematic standpoint um, that you feel can help our players, and you try to implement those after the year. And, you know, I, I will say this. I felt like, I mean, even with the portal, we went and got some uh, some pieces that we needed, you know, and, and, and more importantly, some pieces that fit us. And so going into this year, you know, looking at our personnel, looking at how we can utilize guys, I think that um, – I think we've got players that have obviously been buying in and believing what we're selling them. 
And so obviously we got some new coaches in there and, and, and obviously some new excitement. Obviously anytime you're going into into a new football season. But I think the, the biggest thing for us, like just moving ahead and moving forward is just to make sure we're doing what we're coached to do. Like when we've, we've had good execution, when guys have properly executed, it's, it's literally been a thing of beauty. But when guys have kind of went out and did their own thing, right, whether it's a scrimmage or, 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 or um, a game, like it's very, very, very telling, right? And you try to learn and grow from those moments. But what I'm so excited about in regards to this unit is for them to be able to showcase what we've been doing this offseason. You know, um, obviously with the, you know, having, having Matt Bailey back, I mean, it, 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 it definitely changed some things. And obviously it makes me, feel really excited and comfortable obviously as a play caller because he's he's obviously one of our better players but um, um we got a lot of new additions that i'm really thrilled and excited for you guys to see so what gives you confidence in the group and how eager are you guys because it feels like these guys have had a chip on their shoulder yeah and i think you know um coach always talks talks about having two chips you know um on both our shoulders but like i just think this group of young men right um I just think that's how they function and operate. Like they don't care about the outside noise. They don't care about who gets the credit. All they want to do is 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 go out there and show show people what what real Illinois football is about. You know, like um, Illinois has some really really good football seasons, right? And Illinois also has some seasons where they were close and had some had some bad seasons. And so, you know, obviously being the hundred year anniversary, um, our players they've taken notice of that. You know what I mean? And and and. And for the guys who have been ahead of them, um, or who were before them, I should say, um, they've really taken a lot of pride in, in, in going out there and put, putting on putting on a show, you know, in terms of this football season, so that the the, the former greats can be proud, you know. But more importantly, um, this is an extremely eager group, you know. Um, I, we have over 45 new, new new guys on our on our football team, but you know, I just feel like within the framework of things, we got a lot of experience. Right, at a bunch of different positions, you know, and um, I had a conversation with my wife last night. You know, I, I told her last year for me professionally was a year of growth, right, both on the field and off the field. I think um, going into this year, you know, um, obviously the good Lord always having a me always having a conversation with him, but this year is about establishment, right? Um, establishing establishing ourselves as a, as a as a as a as a prominent defense, right? Establishment in the run game, in the pass game, like in every aspect of what we're trying to get done defensively, and, 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 and we hope that it shows collectively as a team. Penalties, especially in the back unit, were, were a frustration last year with everything Coach Parker has done with the boxing gloves, the oven mitts. Are you confident in what you've seen already that it, it's a cleaner brand of defense and then that will show itself up on Thursday night? I mean, from what I've seen thus far, yes, sir, it has been. You know, um, we had a couple of scrimmages where um, refs came and, 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 and we tried to ask them to be as critical as possible, right? Even things that, that could be nitpicky, we wanted to be we wanted them to be as critical as possible only because we want to be able to showcase our players and show our players like this is what happens um, as a result of, 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 of poor execution, right? And I keep bringing up this stat because it's so alarming to me. Like last year, anytime we got a 15-yard penalty, that drive resulted in a touchdown, right? And so... The goal is to play clean football. The goal is to be penalty free. You know, we um we harped on things defensively, you know, just about being clean and, 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 and executing the plan in which we're asking our guys to do. And so there's been a lot of detail and focus in regards to right, Coach Parker had players put on put on gloves and put, put on mitts so that they won't grab at the top of routes, right? There's just some small little things that I think that are gonna be very, very beneficial for us on the back end. Um and even collectively as a defense, you know, that, that has really been showing up this offseason. And um, I just can't wait to play, man, to be completely transparent with you because I, I really believe, like, those things are going to carry over for us. Your quarterback's a preseason conference player of the year. What kind of challenges does he present for you? Is it a good early test for you? Yeah, and I, I think I think this cat is so underrated, man. I mean, I mean, he is – he is as talented as talented gets. You know what I mean? Um, I, I think we're going to play a multitude of really good quarterbacks this season, which I'm, ex I'm excited to face. But more importantly, I just think he just brings a – I mean, he's savvy. He throws the ball extremely well. Um, he knows how to get out of um, pressure situations, you know. He does a really, really good job 
in managing their offense. You know, he knows how to get the ball out on time. You know, for, for what they ask him to do and what they ask their offense to do, you know, their coordinator do, does a tremendous job in putting that quarterback in winning situations, you know. And so it's going to be a really good test for us early on. You know, um, it wouldn't surprise me if they came out there trying to throw that thing around a little bit because they got the receivers too. You know, they got a bunch of really good skill guys on the, um, on the outside that I truly believe can play at this level. You know, and, and, and it's no secret to us, like, you know, I know – most fans are, are when they look at a schedule, they look at they look at the the, the Penn State's of the world, Oregon's, and, and they focus on different. I mean, but for us, I mean, this is a this is a Super Bowl for us, right? As as much as people want to downplay it, like like we know this team is coming here to beat us, right? Like like they got talented players on their roster that could have played here easily, in my humble opinion, right? And so um, I think our preparation for this game and how we've been taking it. You know, like it, for, for every week is a Super Bowl, right? Like every single week is a college football playoff game, you know, because you never know. And so um, just our, our focus and our mentality is just going out there and taking it one play at a time, one rep at a time, and doing what we're coached to do. Because this team is this team is a really good football team that can put up a lot of points, that they, and they have really, really good skill position. And anytime you mix all that together and you got a, you got a, you got a signal caller and a quarterback who is, who's as talented as this young man, you got a chance to win a lot of games. Talk about the idea of establishment as a defense. How as a coordinator do you convey that to your guys? And in the second part, how have you seen them throughout camp kind of embody that concept? Yeah, um, you know, um, just throughout the throughout the the whole the spring from spring ball to fall camp, you know, um, just some things that we discussed as a as a defensive unit. You know, some of the things that we have a tendency to talk about, right? Like we talk about passion. You know, in and, 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 and being passionate about what you do, being passionate about walking into the building, right? And then we go from passion and we talk about integrity, you know, and I, I, I correlate all of those to the hand, right? Like, like, like the pinky is passion. And without the pinky, you know, like the fist that you make isn't as powerful when you're not passionate about something, right? And then we go to the, to the ring finger when we talk about integrity, right? Like as, 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 as fathers and as husbands, you know, like that, that ring finger holds a lot of value in your belief system and, 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 and how you do things on a day-to-day -day basis, right? And then we talk about mental and physical toughness, right? That's, that's kind of like Coach B always preaches that with the tough, smart, dependable, right? If you can be a mentally and physically tough team, right? And then we talk about being selfless, right? Being selfless, like, like putting that guy that's your teammate ahead of you, right? Playing for that guy next to you. And then we talk about perfect effort. You know, and if, if you can take all of those things, right, and ironically enough, like you can make a fist with it, right, you, 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 you form a lot more power when you got that hand closed and they're all together. Now, now if, you, if you individualize each and every one of these things, right, yeah, you can be good in some areas and poor in others. And so the whole offseason has been about the culture and cultivation of us trying to play together as one, right, and just keep swinging. Right, like, 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 constantly keep swinging. Right, like, no matter what the scoreboard says, no matter what the um, what the situation is, you know, I, I, I took elements of of games that we played last year, and I constantly try to show guys, like, if we just played this a little better, uh, played that a little better, there would have been some successful things that have came from that, but but we didn't. Right, and so we got to learn from those moments, and ultimately we got to stay together so that we can play together. I got it from I got it from Barry Lunny, ironically enough. I got it from Coach Lunny. Um, I, I think they had some other pieces to it, but um, I kind of added my own thing to it. But Coach Lunny, me and him, we were on a recruiting trip together, um, and he spoke to me about it, and it just it tugged at my heart. And as a, I mean, as a defensive player, you're constantly fighting, right? And and, and if you can, uh, all you got to do is throw the right punch. You ain't got to throw a lot of them. You just got to throw the right one, right? And the right one can literally nail your opponent and figuratively put them out, right? And so uh, we we really been preaching that this off season. I guess when we've talked about Xavier this offseason, mm -hmm. we've kind of looked at him through the lens of, of an outside guy, a boundary guy. So what do you like about how that skill set fits at that spot? And we saw him a lot, obviously, yes, at Star last year. Yeah, I mean, you, you, you're you going to see Xavier Scott all over the field. Um, again, in our system, when we recruit guys to come here, you know, we talk about being a defensive back. Um, we don't call them corners. We don't call them safeties. We, don't call, we call them being defensive backs, right? Because our defensive backs are going to be asked to be in a run fit. 
line up at the corner position. They're going to be asking me in a run fit, line up at the nickel position. They're going to ask me in a run fit, line up at the safety position. They could be in the middle of the field. They could be in one-on-one -on -one coverage. And so when you talk about developing a roster of really good football players on the back end who can play DB, right, um, what we're going to ask Xavier to do um, is something that we truly believe he's capable of doing. Like, like Xavier, Xavier is so, so, so talented, but he's also extremely versatile. Right, he's he's a highly intelligent young man, and um, we, we obviously feel that he can take on the bulk of learning more than one position because, you know, he's shown that he's a veteran in the program. Right, like I mean, there were some days during the course of practice, you know, where I would just tell him, I'm like, bro, you sliding inside this segment, right? Like, like, and without a, I mean, he just does it. You know what I mean? And and and, and when you got players in your program that can do that without blinking an eye, um, I think you've captivated these young men. I think coach has done a tremendous job. And, 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 and finding the right players that fit what we want to constantly do. And a result of that, you get really good players. Matthew Bailey, you mentioned Matthew Bailey and just what he brings. Yeah. What, what will he bring now that you got him here to, to healthy week one? Yeah, I think Matt, I think what Matt brings is just a calmness, right? Like, like everybody has that one person that they can call when things get hectic. Right. For some people, it's their mom. For some folks, it's their dad. Right. Maybe it's your sister. Maybe it's your your wife or your girlfriend. Right. Well, well, for me, Matt Bailey is like all of that. Right. Like he, he just has a calming presence about him that when he's on the field, because he communicates at an elite level, because he watches film at an elite level, like there is a there is a there is a sense of security on the field when he's out there. Right. And and I. I just think really good players, you know, really good players that I've been around, when you got a cat like that on the field, whether they're on a the D-line, at linebacker, or, at, or at, at the DB position, it, it, it obviously helps your defense. And so um, I'm just excited to see that young man go out there and play his butt off man. I mean, just the road and the journey that he's been on, um, it's, it's, it's truly a testament to who he is. He's had to face a lot of adversity. And I, I can't tell you guys how – I mean, he is, he is chomping at the pit, man. I mean, there's been times during – fall camp where we hey hey dude you we ain't gonna put you in this and he's like i mean he's like upset at me like he's he's dang there in tears because he's so passionate he's so he's he's so strong will he's such a believer in what we're preaching from a culture standpoint and from a and from a um overall philosophical standpoint that that he, he just wants to be out there and showcase his ability and talent not just for himself but for his teammates you know and um anytime you got a player like that in your program that is like like Trying to get on the field, you know that's it's burning him to get on the field. I, I think you got something special. You guys have pointed took a lot of snaps. Uh, do you see this group maybe as more of a rotation, four or five, six guys, or or has somebody stepped up that showed you they can take four or five hundred snaps? You know, I, I think we got a group of guys collectively. Um, this is probably, in my opinion, probably the most depth that we've had. You know, especially the guys up front and coach between um, Coach Centum and um, and Coach Jamis, and they've done a tremendous job. I mean. We got some really, really good players at multiple positions, and we got some really good guys behind them that are, I mean, we're, we're going to rotate as much as we can, you know, to keep guys fresh and keep bodies fresh. But at the end of the day, you know, um, I mean, we're going to have the guys out there that we feel can help us win at a consistent level, you know, and um, whether that means um, rotation every every other series or every couple of series or within a framework of a drive, if a guy gets tired, then um, that's going to be on a game-to-game -game basis. What have you thought about maybe using the tablets and during the scrimmages, mock games, like to teach and coach in the moment, which I haven't been able to do before? You want my honest opinion, or do you want like a um, like a like a BS opinion? Okay, the honest opinion. What do I feel about the talents? Okay, it, it's you ever taken a test, and before you walk in to take a test, the person next to you has all the answers, like literally, like on their screen. You probably haven't, right? Well, well, well. Growing up, right, growing up in Immokalee, Florida, there have been occasions where you walk in a classroom and the person next to you has all the answers, right? Well, those tablets, you know, it used to be wait until the game's over to kind of get the info that you need. Oh, we should have did this or that. Well, you're going to be able to find out info like right as the drive is ending, right? You're going to be able to gather info literally as the drive is ending. And so there's going to be a point of emphasis on um, it's not what happened, but what could have happened. Right, it's 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 okay. They didn't get us here. This play went for a TFL or a sack, but it could have did this. So there's going to be a lot of um, 
a lot of fast, um, a lot of quick and, and, and I guess somewhat easy ways to kind of see things that could have potentially happened because you have those tablets. And so um, I think they're kind of an outlet, right? I think they're kind of um, um, a, sta a, a scapegoat to a, to a degree because it's, it's, it's going to give people answers to tests that they normally wouldn't have until the game's over. But, I mean, at the end of the day, right, um, it's about it's about players, you know, and if you have the right players in the right position um, and you prepare them the right way, I think they're going to have a chance. But I like the tablets, but but the in a sense, the tablets can almost kind of hinder you in some facets because guys come off the sideline. That's all they want to do is look at it. Right. That's all they want. I mean, as opposed to like what what could have potentially happened. Right. They want they want to see their sack or they want to see their 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 big hit or whatever. And it's like. Dude, we ain't doing it for that, right? We're, we're doing it to make corrections on certain things. But so it, there's pros and cons to it. We had a we had a dry run of it um, last week. You know, it was pretty good for us, and um, I'm excited about it. But there's some there's some knocks on it, right? Um, because there because it is video, right? Because I mean, if it was live steals, I mean, if it was steals, that'd be one thing, just regular pictures. But this is like full video, right? And that, and, and you can get some some quality information from full video. Thank you, guys. Wish you well. I think we should ask the guy uh, on the window out there if you have a question. Well-timed uh, uh, delivery. Um, but uh, super excited to get into game week. Um, you know, we've uh, uh, this will be practice number 21 tonight under the lights. It'll be our last one um, under the lights uh, before we play next Thursday. And just, uh, you know, a lot of thought goes into that. Our first seven practices were at night for a reason. Um, three of our first five games are at night. So uh, a lot of different things uh, that we did over the last 20 practices to get us ready for this game week. Um, I told our guys we needed to have a great uh, fall camp for two reasons. Obviously, the work is in front of us. But uh, what people don't realize, and I shared this with them after they're done, you know, so week one, we got in about 80 hours of film and, and, and practice and walk through and meeting times, 80 hours in the first week, 80 hours in the second week, and 80 hours in the third week, which is, for the non-math majors, 240 hours, right? And and if you got a 12-game season uh, that lies in front of us, obviously we'd love to play uh, in the postseason, but uh, you can only do 20 hours of work week with them during the college football uh, uh, um, once classes start, which obviously start on Monday. So that's 240 hours uh, in the season. So it's kind of amazing. You get just as much work in in three weeks of, of camp as you do during the course of the fall. So uh, there was critical work that got done. Really excited about that. I'm excited about my staff, uh, support staff, uh, everything from uh, the way our guys are equipped to the way that they're nutritionally taken care of, the way they're medically taken care of. Um, Josh has afforded us the opportunities uh, of, of that. The world that we're in right now with um, the ability for analysts and, and quality control coaches to be on the field with us, I think that has really improved the quality of practice um, and the look team and the, uh, the way we can basically function. Uh, also a byproduct of that is, you know, kids are just much more accessible to uh, our coaches just because of pure pure numbers, right? They uh, go by and uh, see some of our assistant coaches, you know, the GAs and, and quality control coaches, those are having some meetings with our guys, right, that they can kind of have one-offs and, and better equipped to, to learn specifically, especially new guys. We have 45 guys that have never been through a fall game with us, right, have never been through a University of Illinois football game. The good news is we have a lot of guys in our building, uh, guys like J.C. Davis, guys uh, 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 Melvin Priestley, Zachary Franklin, 
uh, on the defensive side of the ball, Briggs, uh, um, uh, Terrence Brooks, guys that have played a lot of really good football at colleges other than here, but they've been in multi-game starts. So I think that part has been exciting to see their breath, right? Um, also here at the end, I've opened it up for some of our guys to stand up and talk in front of the team and to hear the, the character, the demeanor, the personalities that we have in that room, the journeys they've had is really cool. So uh, to jump into Eastern Illinois, uh, uh, have great respect for Chris, and, and, and I know Barry showed, shared his story when this uh, uh, came up, you know, that they were going to be on our, our, our schedule, Barry expressed to me, and then the history they've shared. So um, a lot of respect for what he's done. First year, obviously, was uh, some bumps in the road, and then last year to be an 8-3 team that, you know, in realistic, uh, I don't know, never been in FCS, but should have been a, a playoff team, uh, a very, very capable uh, offense, defense, special teams. They have multiple players back. Their whole roster is, uh, when you look at their two deep or projected too deep on offense, defense, and even in the kicking game, it's it's all juniors and seniors, uh, guys that have been junior and seniors in their program, but also guys that have transferred in. So uh, a tall task for us to have. Um, but excited to get out here in Memorial Stadium and uh, uh, be a part of it. So with that, I'll, I'll open up for questions. Coach, uh, you, you mentioned FCS to your guys. Do they talk about that all or not? We do just because uh, of, um, you know, this would be their, uh, on their schedule, the marquee game of the year, right? I think you're always going to get a, a, uh, a, a opponent's best every week. I think it's just good, but I think especially uh, for them, Eastern Illinois, a lot of kids on their roster from Illinois. Um, uh, they have a kid on their roster that he and his dad and I were uh, friends since high school, right? So there's like a lot of these stories. There'll be guys on this team that have, have people they played with in high school. I think that proximity is good. But uh, we kind of always say respect all fear none, right? And, and the message from me as a head coach is the same as we're playing Eastern Illinois, and it will be the same against Kansas, right? Um, you got to learn to play your opponent, but who is your opponent, right? So we're going to look specifically at, you know, we're playing Eastern Illinois, we're, we're against Eastern Illinois' offense, but who is the right guard, who is the left guard? Um, you know, that, that, that doesn't change really matter, independent of who we play. Any update on What's that? Where are you guys at from an injury standpoint? Injury standpoint? Um, as of right now, James Cruz got cleared uh, uh, two days ago, so uh, I think he was ready to burn his green jersey. Um, uh, to have two Cruz brothers limited in practice is not healthy for anybody. Uh, um, but uh, both James and Josh are back cleared, 100% go. Uh, Josh um, had limited practice last week, but he's, he's full go for this afternoon or this evening's practice. I know he's excited about that. Um, on the offensive line, everybody's back. On the wide receiver, there isn't any issues. Uh, uh, nobody will be limited from contact um, or from the scrimmage participation. Um, really, the only the only guys projected to be out that would have played in the game, right, would be uh, the two guys with ACLs, Cole Rusk and, and uh, Mason Moraga. But other, other than that, yeah, we, we're, we're 100%. You get three or four weeks with these guys. It's kind of an open-ended question you can take anywhere. But what did you learn about your team that you didn't know about them before? Yeah, that's a really good question. I think in camp you you learn a lot, right? And and uh, first off, voices, right? When I'm out at practice, uh, I usually script on my sheet where I want to go for practice, and a lot of that is obviously I want to watch things, but a lot of times I want to hear things, right? So. Um, uh, I think that's, that's a very important point. I think a head coach, you probably recognize it more than others, but if a team that talks well and communicates before the snap and after the snap, usually plays very well. Um, so that's communication on the field. But then, you know, we've had uh, all six captains got up and addressed the team in a in, a, in an informal team environment. They stand up in front, gave them the podium just like this. And uh, Josh Crute started off with a message that is Josh Crute's, right? And for them to hear that um, in, the, in the epitome of what that is, he was followed after that by Miles Scott, who, uh, for those in the room, didn't know his story. He talked about coming in as a walk-on, playing on offense, transitioning to defense, uh, and, and the story that told, right? And then I uh, uh, transitioned uh, over and uh, Pat Bryant talked, uh, you know, and, and he talked about coming in and, um, you know, we had actually signed him without me being the head coach, right? And he told that journey of earning the coach's respect in that first year into where he is today, and it just keeps going on and on. And then the last guy I talked last night was Josh Geske. Uh, I had a two or three guys that had wanted to talk, but after he got done talking, the play stood up and went crazy. So I just said, hey, uh, we're going to walk out on this one. It's a walk-off home run. So, uh, you know, I, I think the, the voices that we have now in the locker room, our kids made reference to things that, that uh, as coaches we've said, but also as, 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 co as players to hear. Uh, for instance, T. Rod, when he spoke, he talked about a conversation that day he had with Luke Altmaier. I think anytime you're starting nose, is talking to your starting quarterback, I think that's a really big deal, right? So if you want me to say it, I just said it. He's our starting quarterback. I know some of you guys need that formality. Um, but, but I think that's a really, really big part. And I think, you know, 
uh, after all these years as a head coach, I think that's something that really jumps out is how does this team talk. Coach, are there going to be some key indicators coming out of this game that are going to give you an idea of what kind of team you have, what some strengths and weaknesses and that kind of stuff? Well, I think anytime your uh, uh, game plan matches results, that's a good thing, right? So um, we won't know that till after we're done, right? I think going into this game, uh, to have uh, as many guys as we have, as I mentioned earlier, that have played some good football for us, but key positions that we got new faces is going to be critical, how they play and how they fit into our scheme. Um, I think of, of positions of, of kids that touch the ball. So obviously, you know, all three running backs have played, um, but uh, actually I should say five. You know, Jordan Anderson, who's had as good a camp as anybody, you know, he, he's a guy that, um, you know, I'm excited he's never touched the ball in a live situation. Uh, Khalil Valentine. Um, you know, uh, Tanner Arkin and uh, 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 Henry uh, Boyer, both those guys, I, I think, uh, factor into us. And then we have a young man, um, uh, Carson Goda, who has been very impressive in fall camp. You know, a wide receiver, obviously, we lost two players that touched the ball a lot in Isaiah and Casey, but Pat Bryant, uh, Zakari, uh, uh, Malik Elzey has had an incredible camp. Uh, um, you know, uh, Kapka Jones, um, there's probably six to seven wide receivers that, you know, haven't been involved in a heavy game plan to see kind of how they function. And defensively, uh, to see the new faces up front, I think, um, uh, and then, you know, kind of sprinkle in these other guys, you know, to, to see how they play is going to be a key part. What growth have you seen from Luke this offseason? Luke Walmart? Yep. Um, well, you know, first from the off season, uh, you know, we encourage, empowered, and, and and try to create as much as we could for our quarterbacks in general to talk. Um, uh, I think not just Luke, but uh, Donovan, uh, Kirkland, Michaud, Trey Petty was in in January, so I think that position overall in general has grown in that regard. And then Luke, uh, Luke is very talented. You know, he he, uh, I always say this, right? He kind of looks like a guy that's in a pickup game down at the rec league, right? Like, uh, but he can really, really. Uh, athletically do some things with his feet that are pretty impressive. Um, I think his arm strength is better than it's ever been. His overall strength, his presence, his awareness. I think in year two with Barry, he just has a better understanding of our offense and, and vice versa. I think Barry probably understands him better. Uh, so that happens. And just, just to be completely honest, the people around him, I think, are much more comfortable to see our kids react to his, his speech or his talk, uh, to see them react to him during the course of a game, I think is pretty impre impressive. Who, who or what in your career influenced you the most about things such a new detail to situational football and, and you know, in-game kind of situations when it comes to a practice? You know, I, I've been very blessed, right? So my head coaching resume um, as an assistant under was first Hayden Fry to Bill Snyder. I'm sorry, Hayden Fry to Kirk Ferentz to Bill Snyder to Barry Alvarez to Bill Belichick, right? Um, and and those guys are all coaching. And I'd say I take a little bit of that from everything. Coach Fry was uh, uh, was was more of a, uh, the, you know, that's where I learned how to do player talks. That's why every time I go out on the field when a player's injured because of Coach Fry, he did it. Uh -huh. uh, Kirk was a, probably a guy that really, you know, taught me the, 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 the stuff that we kind of, I would say endlessly go over situational football, but because of his NFL background, and then I think it really came to life for me when I went to work with Bill, because uh, Kirk had been under Bill, right? That's how we actually crossed paths and met. So, I think the combo platter of those two guys were were a huge influence in that regards. But Bill Snyder was uh, for anybody that's ever been around or uh, seen him, like his attention to detail. His theory was to leave no stone unturned and then go back and turn it over again, right? Like he just, we would do four scouting reports on our first po opponent. We do one in in the winter, one in the spring one in the summer and one in the fall, right? And that's just kind of an un, un, uh, unwavering process he taught me, and it's it's been very, very heavy, heavy spent since then. Coach Fry right there? What? Was he yeah. thinking of Coach Fry? Or what was going to do? Just, uh, it's crazy, right? But, like, I think as you get older, you, you remember things better. And Coach Fry, we lost him, and I was just uh, on a conversation with some people that uh, Myers Henderson, who uh, uh, is our new assistant, right? So his son, uh, when Myers, when I got to know Myers, Mark Henriksen, his dad was uh, my office mate next door to me as a as an assistant coach, and Myers was was just a little guy, and he, he Coach Fry used to call Myers and his brother Davis, who played here, um, they called him the law firm, right? And lo and behold, when I called uh, uh, Keith and Johnny the law firm, it was because of that. So just had a lot of memories of Coach you know, lately. What's that? Sorry, speaking of situational football, there's a few rule tweaks this year with first downs and uh, two-minute warnings, that kind of thing. How big of an adjustment is that? For your guys? Yeah, so, um, you know, I, I've said it numerous times to this group and to others and to our players, right, the, the induction of, or the introduction of um, – uh, uh, replay on the sidelines, I think, is an absolutely uh, 
um, game changer, uh, especially in the flow of a game. Like you've never been able to watch video until the day after or until after the game is done. To have that at your fingertips, I think, is going to be priceless in game adjustments. Um, uh, coach the player is going to be a huge deal. The biggest ones I do think, and uh, uh, to your point, it's called a two minute timeout in football uh, for us. It's two minute warning in the NFL. Why we couldn't call it the same thing, I have no idea. Uh, I, I, when we had the mock game and the officials here, they're like, hey, it's a two-minute timeout. I'm like, okay, it's a two-minute warning. But um, that one's a big one because, you know, now you have stoppage in plays. So every, every college football coach, I'm sure, over the last six months has been revamping their, their end-of-game chart, um, their end-of-half chart because uh, it's it's a game-changer, right? I, I do think there will be a, a dramatic spike in, in – in, um, uh, scoring at the end of the second quarter than we've ever seen before. I think it's just going to put more time on the clock. And in today's world offensively, I think that'll be a big, big deal. Um, uh, I would say that's probably going to be the biggest one. There are some rules and points of emphasis that I think it'll be interesting to see how they play out. Um, uh, but, but other than that, I'd, I'd say those are the three big ones. You mentioned the 45 guys that haven't been through a game yeah. like with you. Like what, what do you stress to them about this week? Like what's important? Well, it's, it's very important to have those last three uh, those scrimmages, right? So we, by NCAA rules, were allowed two full scrimmages. So we were dressed in game day uniforms. We were we were uh, uh, full functional on the sidelines and up in the booth. And, and as a as a rule, we had done that once, but never twice. So that that's that's preparing not just our coaches, but for sure our players, right? Like I wanted them to go to the sideline. We did pregame warmups. We did we went in the locker room at halftime. We did everything. So we've literally buttoned it up and and made it as tight as we could. And then the Ma game on Wednesday night out here uh, again made it as realistic as possible but you really don't know until those bullets are flying how they're going to handle it and react but uh, I would say the over preparation has been a good thing. Second year, second year under Coach Henry on the defensive side what, what growth have you, have you seen from him? You know, as a as a head coach, you always say your biggest growth in the season is from game one to game two, right? And I really think as I've been around coaches and especially coordinators, their largest growth comes in the out of season after year one. They just realize and understand, uh, not that he did a year ago, or, right? But um, I think to have a couple new coaches oddly will benefit because it makes you kind of reteach and redefine what you're saying and doing. And uh, so I think that part is there. I think our defensive staff in general is very, very tight. And I think Aaron's learned to rely and lean on them for the things that are there. Um, uh, for me as a head coach, I've witnessed that. Um, and then I think just the uh, overall comfort and flow of understanding, like, when you're an assistant, and even if you, you know, carry a title, um, you kind of hone in on your position. You're affected by everybody, but it doesn't. But now when you're a coordinator, right, and you realize, hey, that D lineman, uh, uh, that second string defensive lineman uh, could be thrust in the action that much faster. I don't think you really realize it until the bullets are flying. So last year when Johnny Newton was knocked out, uh, you know, in the in the end of the uh, 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 was that second quarter uh, against Wisconsin, right, like that, that dramatically changed how the game flowed after that, right? And you got to learn those adjustments, those nuances. Uh, and unfortunately, you don't really learn that until you go through it. Aaron told us just now, he talked about the season of establishment. Uh, defensively, he said establish Illinois is a prominent defense. I'm, I'm curious how you've seen over the course of the offseason that kind of play out or you know, emphasize is the right word. To well, I think, you know, go back to last January, February, March, before we jumped into spring ball, we did a, 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 a seasonal analysis. Obviously, the easy things are statistics and numbers, but I really, how are we doing things? How are we calling things? Um, uh, I think one of our biggest strengths for us at the University of Illinois is we always got to maximize our strengths and minimize our weaknesses. So obviously with the departure of certain players that were strengths, right, where, where these new guys step into those roles, you really got to analyze that, right? So whereas before sometimes we created pressure with three men, uh, uh, now the results, you, you can't ever replace someone's num uh, production, but you can replace, replace their numbers, right? And, and so like however that comes about, Johnny Newton put a lot of pressure on the quarterback on early downs, right? Uh, and it set the record or was the leader in college football for two years, that's obviously been a part of our success, right? And for us to do that, we have to, uh, how are we going to create that same type of pressure, right? So those are the little nuances. Uh, I know he went into great detail. I heard him preaching from up front here, like uh, on, on some fundamental things that they believe in defensively, which I think is really good. There's certain things uh, in my entire career as a head coach, you know, you want your defense coordinator, defense staff to identify to what they are. We all got to play complementary football, but um, I think that nuance uh, for him to have a year of perspective has been good. You're getting to evaluate them. Uh, the transfers, how big of an impact have they had on your program? You know, um, 
not just the, the one year transfer, but like T. Rod Edwards, like I forget that we didn't recruit him, right? So he's in his third year, and now he's the pillar of our of our defense and front, uh, especially. Um, and then he right away identified with Briggs. Those two guys led a defensive line group this summer that has been very impressive, right? Um, uh, but the nuance of the new guys, right, like it's it's immediately easy to see. Some of these guys are very talented. Um, you know, I'm excited to see Torrey Cox, right, like a guy that, you know, maybe uh, the outside world is looking at, at T. Brooks, and T. Brooks has had by far his best week of, of football since he's been here. Um, uh, Zakari is another one I think has, has a, a tremendous amount, but um, two guys that hopefully they don't get noticed much because when tackles aren't talked about, they usually means they're pretty good. But really excited to see Melvin Priestley and and, D, and, and uh, JC take the field. Right, those guys have been a, a, a rock of, of preparation and, and diligence, and two completely different people and players. And uh, but they have bought in. I think uh, you know JC's brought a steadiness to the offensive line. I'm excited to see, and Melvin's got a little juice, a little swag. Right, that that uh, has affected everybody on the offense side, I think players and coaches. So uh, to see that kind of parlay out, um, I would say overall in the offensive line, it's it's I've never seen a group of uh, uh, transfer people come in and make a really good effect. You know, and I think we probably got seven or eight offensive line starters. Hunter Whiteneck has had a really, really good camp. Um, you know, to see him and then, uh, you know, Josh Cruz when he got injured, everybody, I literally said, Five minutes after it happened, I said this could be a blessing because when I found out he was going to come back quickly, right? Um, I said, hey, to to get these other guys to rep has been so to get, uh, you know, uh, 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 TJ to get um, Kevin Wigginton and to get uh, we we had Brandon uh, Henderson pop in there to have those guys get two weeks of work at at the at the center position has been awesome. Finish up with this transfers last night. Indiana's bringing in 31 yeah. transfers. Washington 28, Michigan State 25. Other hand, Iowa has four, Penn State six, Rutgers six. You're at 11. What? How do you balance that? Like at the end of camp, you look at it and say, like, man, I wish I had a couple more transfers, or ooh, I should have a little more freshmen. We're developing. You know, how do you balance that? Well, I think Robert, once we're in camp, the kind of the ship is sold, right? Like so, like I think as a head coach, you know. Um, uh, this this world we're evolving into 105 man rosters and, and uh, addition and subtraction. I think it's about who can manage their roster the best, right? Like those are numbers from last year, but uh, you, you know, um, two years ago we may have fewer. I don't know. This year may have more. Um, I think you know our numbers jump just because a couple guys, you know, like I wouldn't. I, I didn't foreshadow at this time a year ago. I didn't see Tip Ryman hopping out, right? I thought he would have came back, but he just played himself into a draftable player, and, and the results of that were there, right? Um, didn't know if Isaiah Williams at this time a year ago was going to be back. So sometimes numbers can get skewed that way. But, uh, you know, it, it, for us, we had um, nine guys get in the portal in December, that window, right? And then we had 17 get in the portal. Now, not all those were scholarship players. I get it. Um, uh, but when you're trying to track volume, that's a large percentage of new faces, right? And the key is to adapt them and get them to believe in what you, uh, what, how we do things, but also understand they're coming from a background of history that that's the only one they know. So it's really key to find out who they are, how they learn, and, and fit into our system. So, yeah, it is what it is. But I think in fall camp, you can't really do much about it at this point. Thank you, guys.